Hello Lana, it's interesting to have you on the lesson again today. Welcome, this is Monzia, your instructor for Strategy, Governance and Ethics. We will continue with our discussion on the topic ethics and in our lesson number four, we will focus on the item, a conflict of interest. Uh, basically, the reason behind the development of the corporate governance framework or system can be said to be the conflict of interest. The nature of organizations is that they are managed by agents who are also human in nature. And uh, that being the case then, they have their personal or individual interests. But then again, remember, directors are supposed to serve the larger interest of the company. That is the shareholder's interest and the interest of other stakeholders. Uh, that puts the directors in a position of conflict. While making decisions and taking action on behalf of the company, directors will come across situations, so will face situations that will conflict these particular interests. The individual interests vis-a-vis are -vis, uh, the uh, co and, uh, co company interest matter. Uh, conflicts of interest are in inevitable in an organization and they will always exist. So that existence of a conflict of interest is not impropriety in itself. It is only when a person goes ahead to take advantage of a situation of conflict and the benefit out of that situation that it will now amount to an illegality uh, and a violation duty of the fiduciary duty that the directors have towards the shareholders. What is a conflict of interest? A conflict of interest can be described as a situation in which our primary objective is of a shared what then is a conflict of interest uh, the simplest way to define or look at a conflict of interest is that it is a conflict between a person's private interest and public or professional obligations so, it's a conflict between a person's private, private interest and public or professional obligations. Uh, there must be competing interests, a primary interest and a secondary interest. Primary interest is the larger interest of the company. Secondary interest is the individual interest. If we can elaborate that definition further, a conflict of interest is a set of conditions in which professional judgments concerning a primary interest tends to be unduly influenced by secondary interest or a situation in which one's ability to exercise judgment in one role is impaired by one's obligations in another. Uh, uh, defined differently, a conflict of interest is any situation in which an individual or corporation is in a position to exploit a professional or official capacity in some way for their or that of a related party, personal or corporate benefit. Uh, as I noted earlier, uh, the existence of a conflict of interest may not be in itself 
evidence of wrongdoing. It only becomes a legal and ethical problem if an individual in that position or capacity uh, tries to and or succeeds in influencing the outcome of a corporate decision for personal benefits. So basically what is important in an organization as far as conflicts of interest are concerned is to identify them early enough and uh, neutralize them so that uh, they do not uh, degenerate into commission of, of violation of an important duty uh, by the directors. Now, uh, there are different types of conflict of interest which we will be looking at. So types of conflict of interest, conflict of interest. I will first list them down. One, self-dealing, self-dealing. Uh, two, we have, uh, that is uh, outside employment, outside employment, family interest, family interest, or nepotism, and uh, four, gifts. Are self dealing. Our self dealing is going to be defined as a situation where an official who controls an organization causes it to enter into a transaction with the official or with another organization that benefits the official only. This means the official is on both sides of the deal. I defined a self-dealing as one of the types of conflict interest as a situation in which an official who controls an organization causes such an organization to enter into a transaction with the official uh, or with another organization that benefits the official only. In this case, the official is on both sides of the deal. Using an example of self-dealing, uh, there is company A and company B. Uh, someone who is appointed a director of company uh, Director Y. Director Y has a substantial shareholding in company B but serves as a director of company A, or in company A, influences company A to award company B, where he is a majority shareholder, a tender to supply company A with whatever goods or services. In this case, by virtue of the fact that uh, director Y is a substantial shareholder in company B, means... He is influencing decisions from this side because he's a director to benefit his company B. In this case, this is going to be deemed as self-dealing. The second form of a conflict of interest is outside employment. And this, is a type, of, this type of a conflict of interest is where or uh, is a situation where the interest of one job conflicts with another job. Uh, the fact that you are you have an outside job, you are so preoccupied so that it becomes difficult for you to serve as a director in a particular company. You are not able to execute your directorship responsibilities due to the commitments of that outside employment. Remember that the corporate governance rules require that a director is able to commit sufficient time to serve his 
or her responsibilities as a board member in a particular company. The third type of a conflict of interest is nepotism or family interests. And in this case, this is where a spouse, a child, or another close relative is employed or applies for employment by an individual or where or by an individual or where goods or services are purchased from a relative or from a farm controlled by a relative. So here you are either influencing a close relative of yours, a spouse, a child or any other close relative to secure employment in a company in which you are a director. Or you are influencing the company in which you serve as a director to engage in trade with, again, a close family member. Uh, the last type of a conflict of interest is gifts uh, from friends. Now, gifts from friends would have no problem. But a problem arises when these friends also do business with the company in which you serve as a director. So a gift from friends who do business with the person receiving the gifts or from individual or corporations who do business with the organization in which the gift recipient is employed. Now, uh, how then should an organization deal with potential conflict of interest. Now that we've said that existence of a conflict of interest in itself is not evidence of wrongdoing, uh, but it is the taking advantage of a situation of conflict that is unethical and which may amount to an illegality. Uh, conflicts of interest must be managed managing conflict of interest managing conflicts of interest uh, market participants shareholders and other investors must be confident that conflicts of interest are being managed effectively. Uh, the corporate codes of ethics will normally provide procedures for managing conflicts of interest. And uh, commonly, the individual is required in good faith to disclose any material transaction or relationship that can reasonably be expected to give rise to such a conflict to the board. Or if the disclosure is not being given to the board, it can be given to the board ethics, governance, and audit committee. Again, it is normal practice that to avoid potential conflict of interest, uh, managers or directors should recuse themselves from voting on any issues before the board in which they have a conflict of interest. But then, uh, what will be the specific ways of dealing with a conflict of interest? Uh, there are several ways of dealing with conflict of interest, ways or methods, ways of dealing with conflict of interest, COI, with conflict of interest. Now, I will first uh, note them down here. The first one is avoidance. The second one is abstinence. The third one is third party evaluation. Third party evaluation. The fourth one is code of ethics. Code of Ethics and Disclosure. Avoidance. 
as a way of managing conflict of interest. Avoidance is do not participate in a situation which involves a potential conflict of interest. If you're a director in company A and you, com you own company B, uh, do not be interested in company B engaging in trade with company A in which you are a director. Abstinence is where those parties with a conflict of interest are expected to recuse themselves, not to voice or to vote, not to be part of the decision that is going to arrive at a solution or a certain agreement, right? So you as a director, if there is a meeting deliberating on who is going to be employed, don't sit in that session so that you're not going to cast your vote. A third party evaluation is where a third party or a consultant is engaged to make a decision in a situation where conflict or potential conflict of interest uh, exists. So you bring in an independent voice so that the final decision will not have been influenced by the parties or the party with a conflict of interest. Another way of managing conflict is by putting in place a code of ethics to guide our directors and the managers of the company uh, when are taking actions and making decisions. So code of ethics entails clearly spelling out situations of conflicts of interest and the procedures to deal with them. Uh, it is about having a clear set of goals. Having that guideline or framework in place then makes it easier for the board and the management to know how to deal with the potential conflict of interest without degenerating into impropriety. Um, uh, the last and the most common way of managing conflict of interest is through disclosure. And uh, a director with a material personal interest in a matter that relates to the affairs of the company must generally notify the other directors of that interest. A director of a listed company must disclose any relevant interest they have in the shares of the company or a, or a related body corporate. They must also disclose details of certain contracts to which they are a party or which confer them certain rights. A director who at any time has an interest in an issue concerning the company that they serve as directors must make it known to the other directors. And uh, that disclosure must be made before the board uh, and before voting on that issue has taken place. Obviously, the reason for this is for the board to be aware so that they know how to deal. They will know how to deal with the matter and the particular interest so that the party with an interest does not have an upper hand. Uh, the Companies Act emphasizes on the importance of exposure by having an express provision in regards to the need for companies to disclose directors' interest in particular issues of the company. So uh, the companies act as a provision on communication of interests so that the Companies Act requires that companies in the form of notes in the annual accounts to disclose any information concerning transactions involving the directors. This includes any transaction or arrangement that is of a material interest. So basically, in addition to the need to disclose interest in company affairs, 
The law, which is the Companies Act, again, contains an important provision on the need to communicate or the requirement to communicate uh, director's interest uh, concerning uh, company transactions. Um, this effectively uh, brings us to the end of lesson four. Uh, in which we have considered a conflict of interest, the biggest challenge that face uh, directors as they go about their duties as directors of a company. I want to restate the importance of a conflict of interest in corporate governance by saying that uh, if it were not for the potential conflict of interest that exists in organizations, we wouldn't in the first place need the corporate governance mechanism or framework in place. If you go back to where we started with the corporate governance uh, theories, our first theory was the agency theory. And in that theory, the literature behind it was that the fact that a company is own managed by agents uh, creates a situation where there is a possibility of these agents becoming self-interested, uh, contrary to them pursuing the interest of their principals, who are the shareholders. So the main problem or challenge in the management of organizations and uh, the management of organizational resources is particularly uh, conflict of interest. And what conflict of interest does is uh, compromise or impairs the ability of a director to make a fair, objective, and independent judgment. And if the director doesn't do that, then, then that exposes the shareholders and other stakeholders to a risk of not very good decisions being taken on behalf of the company. So just to restate a few areas of emphasis under this item, conflict of interest, we identified the main types of conflict of interest to include self-dealing. Uh, two, uh, we have nepotism, what we call family interests. We also had outside employment as another type of a conflict of interest and three, four, sorry, we had gift from friends. Uh, obviously, when you're receiving gift from friends who, who also do business with the company, then this exposes you to, again, uh, compromising your judgment when it comes to considering issues relating to these friends. Then again, we said, what is required in a company? Because the conflicts of interest are inevitable and that they will always be there in an organization. Uh, what is important is to identify these conflicts of interest early enough so that they do not amount to impropriety or somebody doesn't go ahead to take advantage of the conflict of interest. And we're identifying various ways of managing conflict of interest. Uh, we're saying one is avoidance and not participating in a situation that has a potential conflict of interest. We're also identifying... Uh, uh, that is abstinence, which is recusing yourself, not being party to uh, deliberations or sessions that vote on an issue. Uh, um, three, we are also identifying third party evaluations where you can bring in an independent voice uh, to uh, make a decision on a situation of conflict of interest. Again, we're saying a code of ethics is a good way of managing conflicts of interest so that people are clear uh, on uh, the procedures to be followed in situations of conflict of interest. And uh, finally, and the most common uh, way of dealing or managing conflict of interest is by uh, disclosure, where directors are expected to make uh, or to disclose whatever interest they have in an organization. So in relation to the need to disclose interests by directors, we will say something about conflict of interest register. Conflict 
of interest register we have stated that uh, a director who is interested in an issue concerning the company in which they serve as a director uh, has a duty to disclose that interest. This disclosure is going to be done on two levels. One, it's going to be disclosed to the boards, and two, it is going to be disclosed in a conflict of interest register. So the company must always maintain a conflict of interest register where they will be entering any potential conflict of interest by the directors. Uh, they will also need to update that register to capture new conflicts of interest that may arise in the course of time and again uh, to update it in relation to conflicts of interest that might uh, disappear. So basically, uh, because a director who is interested in a transaction or proposed transaction with the company must disclose the nature and value of the interest, uh, that disclosure he is going to be made to the board and in entered in the conflict of interest register. So a conflict of interest register will be kept and regularly maintained and monitored where officers will register any perceived current or potential interests. The conflict register will include information about, uh, most importantly, three things. One, the officer affected. Again, two, the type of conflict of interest. And again, three, uh, how it will be ensured that the decisions are made in the company's best interest. Uh, similarly, any new conflict of interest will be added to the conflict of interest register. So uh, basically a conflict of in interest register is to maintain an inventory of both perceived, current, or potential conflict of interest by the board of the directors. Uh, this does it for a lesson. I again encourage you to read further on this one sir, for you to have uh, finer and greater details of uh, the area. And on that note, this is it for a lesson. Thank you, and I'll uh, see you in our next lesson.